Quick work. Technical difficulties. All right, so sit pretty. This is one of my favorite tricks to teach because I actually get to talk about the body and how muscles work. We tend to think of dogs as like, they can do all these tricks. They can wave, they can roll over, they can down, they can touch, they can spin. Um, but part of my job also is to have you guys aware of how their, that their bodies are still bodies and their muscles and they're growing. And, and some of these tricks take a lot of work. And Sid Pretty is a great example of that. So I want you guys to think of their heart as a muscle, just like ours. And the muscle for a dog is built to pump blood this way. So when you take that dog and you set it this way, it's now pumping blood up. And that's a lot harder. So if you imagine like, um, like hanging upside down on a on the monkey bars when you were a kid. What did it do to you, right? It, it made your face feel all funny. You might have felt a little funny, but over time you could just hang upside down for minutes and it was probably fine. I wouldn't recommend doing that now if you haven't practiced it in a while, can attest, it doesn't feel great. <laughs> but having, uh, having an awareness that that heart is working harder as it's pumping against gravity is point one. Point two, is a lot bigger than and captain is i think he's about size um he's about 50 pounds and he's very top heavy so if you're to see him he's kind of like a little bit more of a barrel in the front he's got these skinny little hips so his body is going like he's going to have a lot more weight up here to kind of deal with um whereas as a beagle, she's a lot more square and she's closer to the ground. So this is going to be easier in general. Captain, hop please. Hop up. This is going to be easier in general for a dog like her because of her size. She's more square and she's a lot closer to the ground. So the bigger the dog, the harder it is. Oh, did he mute it? No. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> So that's another thing to keep in mind. The third thing to keep in mind, when we are asking a dog to go from here to here, why? They're also using these muscles, which they don't usually use in this way, and these muscles that they don't usually use in this way. So we're taking our dogs and they're going from here and now they have to engage their core in a whole new way. So if you've seen those like little dogs that can sit like this for minutes, they're square, they're not fighting as much against gravity, but then you take a bigger dog like Captain or even and you put them up like this and their bodies are working really hard to try to stay in this position. So you might see a lot of this um, or even tipping forward or back um, or you just might see them give up completely. <laughs> um, if you think that they're going to fall backwards. It might be better if you have a partner kind of standing behind a catch in case they go because we don't want them to get hurt. If their tails stick out and they fall back, you don't want them to sprain their tail or to hit their head if they fall into a cabinet or something. So the way that I like to teach it, Captain, touch. So I'm going to put him in front of me, my primary reinforcement zone. And I'm going to ask him to give me paw. If your dog knows paw already, this is super helpful. If not, just practice taking their foot and giving them a treat. And I'm going to just hold him here. I'm not going to grab his foot. I'm just going to hold it as a brace for him, a treat on his nose, and I'm just going to kind of hold him up for a second, one or two cookies, and let him down. I'm not going to have him stay there for very long. Paw. Treat on the nose and right there. What I the other thing that tends to go wrong with sit pretty, and I can usually get him to do it if I set him up for a harder trick because he's been doing this for a long time. Cap, this way. Sit. So if, so you see how he's standing up here? He's leaning into my leg to stand up and his butt's coming up. That's not what you want. You want to make sure that he has the impulse control for whatever reason it is. There we go. So my leg is here if he needs it. The only way I can trick him into messing up is if I give him the harder variation. So if his leg, if his butt pops up, no cookie. Pop. Take him here. Oh, good boy. 
And if he elects to not use my hand as support, that's okay. So I'm going to try without it. I'm going to keep my hand here just in case he needs it. Oh, you see how he started to pop up? Then the cookie stopped. As he gets better, sit. Human. Yes. So for him, I call it human. Um, <laughs> human. Oh. Good job. So, but even with him and doing this for a few years, I never asked him for more than four or five seconds because it is, I know the toll it takes on him and I know he doesn't have the best hips to start with. So I'm not going to force him to keep working really hard at it. But if you have a smaller dog or a more um, athletically sound dog, you can have them sit like that for a while. I don't encourage people who have like corgis to do this because they're long backs, dachshunds because of their long backs, uh, German shepherd dogs, the dogs that have like wonky hips and bad knees, because there's so much pressure going on their base, I tend not to recommend those dogs do this unless their vet says, no, no, your dog is fine, go for it. 